Let's take a quick tour of Liberty Basic. This will be useful for beginners who uh, will want to understand how to use all the features. So let's start Liberty Basic up. Okay, here we are. So here you see the Liberty Basic Editor, this big window. And this is where you write your code, you make your own programs, you can run examples, you can start the debugger from here. Uh, and a smaller window here is a, um, it's kind of a portal into different things that you can uh, learn, things you can use. Like for example, if you click on these different links, you can go to um, information, uh, you can go to the community, the forums, um, links to interesting things, a tutorial, etc. Okay, so let's close this. Okay, now, uh, right here, we can create our own program if we want. We can open examples. For example, uh, let's open some examples real quick. So click on the File Open button on the toolbar. And there's various ones here, like most of these are really simple examples that just demonstrate one idea at a time. For example, here's a very small program. And what this does is that it shows you the uh, current time in a format that includes AM and PM. I'll run that with this run button here. There we are. So you notice it says PM on the end. So if it had been in the morning, it would have said AM. And the code's right here for you to understand how it works. Another example would be some simple graphics. Uh, example, drawing some, um, some boxes. Let's open that. So here we you can see that we're setting ourselves up here draw, to draw in colors. And then uh, down here, we open a window for drawing graphics, and then we have some various commands. Liberty Basic uses a pen, so you give commands to the pen, and then uh, down here we draw some boxes. Let me show you what that looks like when you run it. So we've got some boxes uh, on top of each other uh, in different colors. Okay, let's look at another example. Uh, here's an example of how to create a calculator. So you can see what we've got here is we're, we're setting up some buttons that you would find on a calculator. And then down here, uh, we open a window to put those buttons in. And after that, we have different routines for displaying the calculator and um, what to do when each button is pressed, a routine for each thing, addition, subtraction, etc. So let's run that. So, for example, 3 plus 4 equals 7. Very simple. All right, now let's make a program of our own. So to do that, you, you click on this new file button. And we can just create something really simple. Uh, the traditional example is called Hello World. Let's just do that first. It's one line. Usually when you study computers, uh, they, they in programming, they, they do this first. It's just a tradition. So that one line, run it, says Hello World. Okay, let's save that. So you can click here, save the file. It doesn't know what to call the file, so we'll give it a name. Hello.bas, save it. Now, you'll notice up here that it's saved. All right, now we'll make another one, make another program. It 
this will ask you what your name is, and then you can print a response. No mistake. Nice to meet you. Put an end statement on there. Run that. Tom Riddle. Nice to meet. You. Okay. Well, let's make another one. Let's save this one first, actually, again. Just, I'm just doing this to show as an example how this works. So, ask name.bas, save that, make another one. This one will just count to 10. On that counts to 10. Save that. Okay, the reason I did this is because now if you click on the open file, you'll see that your files are saved in the same place that the examples are saved. And so if we click on the date modify to sort it by, oops, that's right, right here, the three most recent files are the ones that we wrote, and you can just open them from here. Okay, also, click on the file menu, and you'll see that they're added to the most recent files list here. All of the files that we just looked at. Okay, now let me show you about the tutorials. If you click open, and what we're looking for here is files that are called lesson files. So I picked from this list over here, dot lesson. And Liberty Basic comes with two of these. And uh, one of them is the Liberty Basic tutorial. So let me show you, click on this. Opens the editor in a special format called a lesson browser. And the lesson browser uh, on the left is an overview, an outline. If you click on the items that have a plus, then you can expand them. And if you, if, as you work through, you read the material here, and down here there can be an example that you can run. Some of these don't have examples to run, but most of them do. Um, so if we work our way down here until we find an example. Okay, there's one. Here's a complete running example that has everything you would need. So if you click on the Run button, then it will show you the example in action. So this one calculates tax. So let's say that the, the item costs a dollar. So with a 5% tax, then that's your total. Okay, and the examples will get more and more sophisticated. Um, there's an example here of a game. There, and it walks you through actually explaining how to code the game. Um, down here we talk about formatting. Right, and then there are exercises. Um, then we talk about using arrays and looping and files and drawing graphics. Um, there's a lot of material here. Okay, that's the tutorial. So now let's look at the other file. So I'll pick LSN files. And this is a file called New Four Features, which simply contains lots of information about um, recently added features for Liberty Basic. There's lots of really cool stuff in here including things for um, um, doing sprites and drawing and um, using a joystick, um, uh, special things you can do with uh, controls on the screen like buttons and text boxes and things like that. There's all kinds of things in here, playing music, 
Um, lots of cool things in here. Just this is definitely something to read if you want to sort of an, a um, uh, cool overview of some of the neat features that have been added to Liberty Basic uh, in recent uh, times. So let's see. Uh, let me show you how to use the debugger real quick. A real quick overview of the debugger would be let's pick a program here. Well, let's pick the same program that we looked at before. Okay, uh, this one. Right, and this is the debugger. This little ladybug here, you click on that. Okay, now what this lets you do is you can watch the program execute one line at a time. Okay, so what we need to do here is click on this button here to step into this function. So we're going to go into the function, right? And there are some variables in here like colon index and hours and AM or PM. And here they are, they're listed here. So now, uh, if all, all I have to do now is if each time I click on this button to step one line at a time, it shows me each line of code as it gets executed. And you see the result here. So this is a really useful function. Uh, the debugger can really help you out when you're trying to learn how to code, when you're trying to figure out if there's something wrong with your the program that you write. Uh, it's very, very useful. And we'll do a full-blown uh, tutorial uh, of the debugger in a future video. Okay, so some of the other features here. Uh, if you look here, there is a, a preferences option here that you can look at which shows you a bunch of cool things that you can uh, turn on or off or tweak for the Liberty Basic environment itself. Um, for example, this first item here uh, allows you to turn on or off a pop-up when you want to quit Liberty Basic. It says, are you sure you want to leave? Here's a, uh, an option that allows you to see a, a pop-up notice when your program that you're running is done running. Some people find that very helpful. Um, this option here allows you to start Liberty Basic up so it fills the entire screen when you launch it. This option here allows you to automatically uh, load either the most recent file uh, that you were working on or uh, the most uh, or, or uh, a specific file that you like to see come up when you launch Liberty Basic or no file at all. This option here um, allows you to see a progress dialog. Um, usually when your programs are long, it's kind of nice to see how, how they're coming along when they're compiling, if, if they're many hundreds of thousands of lines long. Uh, here is a special feature called compiler reporting, which helps you to find variables that um, are accidentally um, have the same name, but spelled uh, with upper and lowercase different. It's useful sometimes. Um, here is uh, an option that allows you to um, specify that you want to create a backup file of your program when you, every time you run it and you can specify a folder where you want all of your backup programs to be saved and the default is that it's going to save them in the subfolder called BAK of the folder where up here where your programs are actually saved. Okay, but you can make it, you can create a backup folder anywhere on your hard drive and put your programs there if you want to. Here uh, is a syntax coloring option that you can turn on or off. This feature, um, enable auto indenting, um, makes it a little easier when you're indenting code uh, not to have to keep on hitting the tab button all the time when you go to a new line. Um, this menu item, this this checkbox uh, adds a, a menu item to all the windows in your program that allow you to 
to kill the programs um, in case maybe they get out of control, like you enter a loop or something like that. Uh, even if this is turned off, you can still get it um, up here on the run menu. There's You can still kill programs from up there. Then um, you get to specify here whether you want your programs to end in BAS or not, which is .BAS is sort of the standard extension for basic programs, but you can change it to whatever you want because um, maybe you have another version of basic on your system and you want Liberty Basic programs to end in something different like LBA or LBAS or whatever you like. Um, here's an option that uh, automatically reloads the current program from the disk every time the editor becomes active because some people like to use their own editor and, and then so if you go if you're editing your program in a different editor and then you save the disk um, and then you come back to Liberty Basic then it will automatically reload that file that you just saved from the other editor and then you can click run and run it from there. Um, this option uh, allows you the always, always open main window allows you to always have your um, login window open automatically even if the code in the program says don't so that when you open your debugger it will always open with that window finally we have the filter bad characters option which is useful for when you're pasting code off of one of the community sites out of a web browser in Liberty Basic because sometimes web content has funny characters that are either uh, illegal or or uh, invisible um, that shouldn't be in there because the the web browser um, provides them that way when you copy and paste and so people run into problems and so I turn turn this on to filter out the characters that shouldn't be in there and then you'll be able to run the examples okay All right, so uh, one other really useful feature of Liberty Basic that I'll touch on here is if, let's say you have a large program. Let me pick one that's big, sort by size on the examples. So let's say this uh, contact managers example. Okay, this is big. So if, if I'm trying to find something, in here it can be hard to find what I'm looking for because it's so large and you have all these routines you know all of these with different names on them and it's not always necessarily going to be easy for me to find what I'm looking for by just scrolling around so if I click on this this jump to then what it does is it gives me all the the uh, subroutines and branch points and everything all on a list on the left and they say well I know I'm looking for the resize window subroutine I can just look down here and see oh, there it is and just double click on it it takes me right there so this allows you to jump around quickly inside of a large program so all right uh, thanks for watching this video if you have any suggestions for videos uh, please let me know send your email to Carl G at libertybasic.com and uh, thank you and enjoy Liberty Basic